We have finally moved past the uncanny value of AI-generated videos, but at what cost? Seeing Elon as a Disney character? Exactly one and a half year ago, we saw the first text-generated videos appear looking like... And not long after, it started to generate some top-tier meme content that for once, it's not popular because it's cursed, but because of how interesting it is to look at. But technically, this does not entirely count as AI-generated videos, since the characters are generated with mid-journey and facially animated by DID. But it's more on the image animation side of things. You can check out my older video to know the difference between them. And on the topic of DID, which by the way is also today's sponsor, they want me to introduce their new creative reality studio that is now available on both Android and iPhone to you guys. If you have not heard of DID, they are basically a service that lets you create one of the best facial animations compared to other similar services and open source models. They enable you to create videos with realistic digital avatars, all starting from just a single photo, which you can upload to the studio. The face in the image can then be animated with data as simple as audio files, or even text if you want a text-to-speech avatar. And like the Harry Potter video, you can combine DID with tools like Midjourney, Runway, and ChatGPT. Whether you want to reimagine some movie characters or animate your own avatar with sync dialogue, the possibilities are unlimited. All you have to do is to go onto their creative reality studio, upload your own presenter or generate one, type out the script, have the AI synthesize the voice over for you, or sync it with an audio of your choice, and touch it up however you like. It's incredibly fast and easy to use, and you can get started now with a free 5 minutes of generations using the link down in the description. Creative Reality Studio is available on both PC and mobile phones, so you can easily create videos, share them, and even tag DID.studio for more people to see. Thank you DID for sponsoring this video. Today, I'm going to be mostly talking about text to video and image to video. While we didn't get Elon or Will Smith eating spaghetti as a baseline this time, Pika Lab still showed the world that you don't need a Google-sized research team to build a generative model this good. In their Pika 1.0 trailer, they showed that their text to video model has some top tier quality and consistency, which is jaw-dropping to say the least. It not only has text to video, but also image to video, video to video, video extension, video expansion, camera controls for video generation, and generation up to 24 FPS. It literally got every function that people wanted for AI video generations. And the only thing that's stopping me from showing you even more Pika Labs is just the waitlist. Holy sh and there I got it. So as you can see in the current state of AI, you either have the waitlist experience, window shopping experience or the blessed by open source experience. And luckily, you get to experience the full suite today. Starting from Emu video which was released by Meta back in November, to be completely honest, it may have been the root cause for this entire AI video arms race. I already had a more in-depth video on Emu so I'm not going too deep about it today. However, the highlight of Emu is this benchmark showing people's preference for Emu over a lot of other pre-existing AI video generators, with some very notable wins against Pika Labs prior to the release of 1.0 and Runway Gen 2, which is a really popular text-to-video service. And the win rate is maybe a bit too high. While Emu Video was a window shopping experience, so the benchmark might be super cherry-picked, but after six months of silence in the field of AI video, nobody is gonna let that statement slide. All it took Runway Gen 2 was three days to get a pretty insane update, with some of the coolest features like camera speed control for director mode, motion brush, where the region that you drew on your image will be animated, and a huge upgrade for its base models. The open source people did not take it lightly too. A day later, Stability AI released their first ever open source text video model called Stable Video Diffusion, with code, weights, and research paper completely free to the public. In the paper, they explained that they turned ST2.1 model into a video model with a resolution of 576 times 1024, then branched it into four different types, text-to-video generation, image-to-video generation, frame interpolation, and multi-view generation. The model they have made public at that time was only image-to-video generation, but the demos people have generated with it so far are pretty amazing. However, the real crafty results probably won't appear until a few months later, because the ecosystem around open source usually needs some time to be developed. However, it is based on SD 2.1, so who knows if this will actually take off or be forgotten like SD 2.1. They also claim that SVD is preferable over Runway and Picolab 60% of the time, which is definitely less drastic
drastic than what Emu claimed for the win rate. On the other hand, multi view generation that was mentioned in the paper was later rebranded as Stable 0123, which is an image to 3D model that aims to generate the same object from different perspectives. With this, they hope to find ways to let AI better understand 3D object coherency because video generators are operating on a 2D perspective. I can definitely see the end game of video generators is generating 3D videos of objects and projecting them onto a 2D perspective, which is kind of like making 3D animation. Runway also recently made a statement that they are aiming to develop something like this called general world models, where the model is capable of understanding 3D world in order to better generate coherent videos. It's probably just a pitch deck announcement to the investors. But the biggest reveal and probably the winner of this arms race was Pika 1.0, which was announced only eight days after Emu video. Pika Labs not only blew the whole field away with its unreal quality on the video generations, the entire internet was also impressed by how good it is just by looking at the amount of people saying Hollywood is dead or we need to start regulating AIs. While these four currently have the biggest spotlight, they are not the only ones publishing too. So here are some honorable mentions. Make Pixel Dan's high dynamic video generation uses both an initial image and an ending image on top of text prompt for video generation, which is kind of like a sandwich. Image to video gen XL. This research uses two stage video generation. Well, a lot of people does that, but they said this guarantees coherent semantics, then refined by upscaling to 1280 times 720 resolution. But it still looks a bit blurry even after upscaling. Real time latent consistency models, since the fusion-based image generation can be generated near 1 FPS now, real-time AI video generation may just be an illusion of fast image-to-image -image generation. Fusion Frames aka Kandinsky video, the same people that made the text-to-image model Kandinsky are back with another two-stage video generation technique where it first figure out the storyline of the video, then do frames interpolation to generate movements. IP adapter or batch unfold for image generation, this is more on the text-to-image and image to image territory and the methodology gets really complicated as most open source people just puzzle things together. But generally, you either use IP adapter plus, batch unfold, depth, animation, control net, text prompt. Well, actually, I'll probably cover this in a separate video because it's, it's too much but the result can look pretty good. Like this mixed motion animation as a base to generate some cool animations. Levy and Sane both are proposed by the same lab with Sane proposing a short to long architecture that can connect shots of different scenes together like a transition, which enables story level videos and Levy, which aims to align prompt to keyframes for temporal correlation with interpolation to generate smooth transitions. Animate Zero, which is like a predecessor of Animate Diff, it can generate videos from a single image using text prompts and supports pre-existing SD 1.5 models with functions like video editing, frame interpolation, looped video generation, and real image animation. Might be worth a revisit later too. Bullet video diffusion with yet another two-stage generation but differ by first compressing images and videos within a unified latent space then joining the spatial and spatial temporal information to generate videos. And lastly, free noise can synthesize 21 seconds for a 24 FPS video or a total of 500 12 frames thanks to the idea where you construct a sequence of noise frames with long range correlation rather than initializing noises for all frames which allows for multi-text conditions as the video content changes over time while all these are happening google is still coping about gemini understanding videos with rumors of gpt 4.5 being able to do that already but the whole ai video landscape may change thanks to the speed we are experiencing and the room of improvement it still has so see you guys six months later and subscribe to stay tuned shout out to andrew laschelias chris ledoux alex j alex marie's mcgulam deacon fifal daddy wen and many others that support me through patreon or youtube uh, follow my twitter if you haven't and i'll see y'all in the next one